morning. Today I am going to discuss a very important type of cancer called cervical cancer or cervical cancer. Any individual who has female genitalia, whether they are women obviously, but also transgender individuals can develop this type of cancer. Please do not confuse this with uterine cancer, which I have discussed in my previous video, the link of which I will leave above here. This type of cancer, the cervical cancer, develops in younger individuals as compared to uterine cancer. In that way, it is a little bit different. Now, what is a cervix? I have drawn a diagram of a female genitalia over here. In green, I have drawn the vagina. In blue, I have drawn this little structure here, which is like a very thick tube-like structure. There is a gap in the middle. This is called the cervix, which joins the vagina to the main body of the uterus. And from the uterus arise our two fallopian tubes and the ovaries are attached to the end of the fallopian tubes. So cervical cancer develops in this part of the anatomy called the cervix. There are two parts of the cervix. One is on the outside, which is called the exocervix or ectocervix. And one is the lining of the cervix, which secrete a slimy structure called mucus, and that is called the endocervix. Vast majority of cervical cancers, which develop obviously from this structure here, develops from the ectocervix or exocervix, which is the outside lining of the cervix. Over 90% of them develop from here. Only 10% or less of the cervical cancers develop from the endocervix. What causes cervical cancer? Almost all patients who develop cervical cancer has long-standing infection with a virus called human papilloma virus. There are over 100 varieties of this virus and it's a very, very common infection. However, only a small number of patients who have this infection develop cervical cancer. This infection is most frequently transmitted by sexual intercourse, however, can also happen because of skin-to-skin -skin contact on the genitals. Out of almost 100 strains of human papillomavirus, only a handful, when exposed to, can cause cervical cancer. This cancer is avoidable and is preventable. And there are two main ways of avoiding or preventing this cancer. In United Kingdom, vaccination for human papillomavirus is offered to all girls between the age of 12 and 13. This vaccination can be done later on in life as well, in the 20s or 30s or even later. However, the efficacy of the vaccine becomes less once the woman is exposed to sexual intercourse. The other way of preventing this cancer is by doing regular screening. In United Kingdom, screening is offered to women between the ages of 25 and 64 by doing cervical smear, also called pap smear, and it is done five yearly. If there are no serious changes in the cells of the cervix, if however is showing changes, then the cervical smear is repeated earlier than five years. In certain parts of the world, these facilities are not available. If they are not available, then please try and ensure that you or your daughters get vaccination earlier on in life and you get regular screening done with a pap smear or cervical smear every five yearly. What are the main symptoms of cervical cancer? The symptoms of cervical cancer are very similar to other symptoms which are very, very common in many, many benign conditions. So people don't take them seriously to start off with. And also they do not cause much symptoms earlier on in the disease. Commonest symptom is bleeding. Now bleeding could be bleeding like heavy periods. Bleeding could be between normal periods or bleeding could start after menopause. So any bleeding which is abnormal for you, you should take it seriously and get it checked out by your doctor. 
A clear discharge from the vagina is also common in these patients and it smells far more as compared to a normal vaginal discharge. Pain can also be present. This pain can be in the lower down in the pelvis, in the perineum, in the lower back, in the tummy, while passing urine or while doing poo or during intercourse. Any type of this pain should be investigated further. So go and see your doctor if you develop any unusual pain which has not been there before. Why is screening so important in cervical cancer? So I've shown a little pathway how cervical cancer develops. So it starts from human papilloma virus infection. Now, as I said earlier, do remember human papilloma virus infection is extremely common. Almost one in three women in the United Kingdom will have this infection when they're sexually active. But a very small, small percent of these women will ever develop cervical cancer. It's a cancer of earlier age, which is different from uterine cancer, which develops later on in life after 50 years of age. It is very, very uncommon, this cancer, under the age of 25. So what happens between infection with HPV virus and developing cervical cancer? The interval from infection all the way to cancer, if it develops in a small percent of women, takes many, many years, it takes between 10 to 20 years. From HPV infection, the first thing that happens in very small percent of women is they develop a condition called CIN, which is called cervical intraepithelial neoplasia. This is slight changes in the cells of the cervix, which are precancerous, and if they are treated early, then these women will not progress to develop cervical cancer. If this is not treated, then they will develop cervical or cervical cancer. Again, from here to here can take anywhere from five to 10 years. That is why screening for cervical cancer every five years or more frequently in women who are developing some cell changes in the cervix to keep an eye on development of cancer. If picked up early, this is a very curable cancer. How is cervical cancer diagnosed? Obviously, the first thing is the patient with the symptoms of abnormal bleeding or pain or discharge from the vagina goes to the doctor and doctor examines the patient. And the examination is performed through the vagina, but also from the abdomen and sometimes a rectal examination might also be necessary. And once the doctor suspects a vital cancer, they will take some biopsies from the cervix over here. Now these biopsies can be done in the doctor's clinic or the patient could be referred to the hospital for a biopsy under a procedure called colposcopy. Cells are taken from this part of the cervix, which is the common, commonest part of the cervix that develops cancer, which is the ectocervix or exocervix that we discussed earlier. And those biopsies are sent to the laboratory to check under the microscope and the diagnosis of cervical cancer or CIN will be made. After that, to stage the cancer, so how early, how advanced the cancer age, which dictates the treatment of the cancer, an ultrasound scan followed by a CT or MRI, and to check for spread of the cancer, different parts of the body like liver, lungs, and the bones, a PET scan, which is positron emission tomography scan, will be ordered. Not all patients in every center will go through these tests, but vast majority of the patients in the West who are being staged for cervical cancer will go through these investigations. Finally, we are briefly going to discuss the treatment for cervical or cervical cancer. The treatment depends on the fitness of the patient and also depends on the stage of the cancer. By stage, I mean how early or how advanced the cancer is at the time of diagnosis. The mainstay of treatment for early cervical cancer is surgery. And the surgery can be performed in many different ways and many types of surgeries are performed depending on the stage of the cancer and also depends on the fitness of the patient. So just the cervix with the upper part of the vagina can be removed or 
the whole uterus with the cervix can be removed or the cervix, the uterus and the tubes and the ovaries can all be removed together with the lymph glands which are around the cervix. Now surgery can be performed on its own or surgery can be performed either after chemo and radiotherapy to shrink the cancer down or chemo and radiotherapy can be performed after surgery. If the cancer is very advanced and surgery is not feasible, is not going to cure the patient, then the option is either chemotherapy or radiotherapy. Sometimes they are given together and occasionally they are given separately. If the cancer is very, very advanced, gone to other parts of the body like the lungs and the liver and the bones, and the patient is not very fit for surgery or chemo or radiotherapy, then a palliative treatment like pain control and other sort of support will be necessary, which in the United Kingdom is usually given under the supervision of Macmillan nurses. I hope you found this video informative. If you did, then please do remember to like and subscribe my channel. Until next time, I'll see you very soon. Take care.